After 50 years, the All-Africa Games return to their first ever host country. We bring you all the latest updates from Up Congo, Brazzaville. In Brazzaville, well, the opening ceremony at the 2015 All-Africa Games is finally over and the focus can now shift to the sportsmen and sportswomen here in Congo, Brazzaville. We'll be previewing all the action ahead as well as telling you all that has already happened here in Brazzaville. High official costs in the dwindling numbers of competitors are worrying African rallying officials. Well, hello and welcome to Match Point, bringing you all the latest sports news from the continent and beyond. Why high costs and dwindling numbers of competitors are worrying African rallying officials and delight as a South African city is packed to host the 2020, picked rather, to host the Commonwealth Games, a first for the continent. Well, the 11th edition of the All Africa Games officially got underway in Brazzaville on Friday as countries seek continental bragging rights in Africa's multi-sport competition. South Africa, overall champions in the last edition in 2011, will be represented in 15 of the 22 disciplines. Swimming will be one of the events they'll hope to dominate thanks to their rich history in that particular sport. Now, Olympic and world champion Chad Leclerc, who acted as the country's flag bearer during the opening ceremony, is among the country's top stars in the pool, but will be expected to deliver multiple medals alongside fellow Olympic champion Cameron van der Berg. Olympic hopefuls will take the advantage of the big stage as additional preparation for Rio Olympics next year. Now, South Africa and Mauritius picked wins in badminton in the ongoing All-Africa Games in Congo. South Africa recorded a 3-0 set victory against the Seychelles as Mauritius upset favorites Nigeria by the same scoreline to advance to the finals of the tournament. Five games will determine who qualifies for the team event finals. And it was Seychelles players who won the toss and chose to serve, showing some great skills at the beginning but they could not outsmart the South African pair of Andres Marlon and Jennifer Fry. The South Africans were simply too quick and too strong for the Indian Ocean Archipelago players, winning the rally 21-14. But sensing their grip on the rally was weakening, the South Africans summoned one last push with a series of smashes and drop shots, winning the rally 21-18. In the end, it was a good outing for South Africa, qualifying for the finals after winning the men's and women's singles as well, making it 3-0 against the Seychelles. The Seychelles team coach admitted his team simply lost to a better side. Uh, not enough. We only ready in this uh, three months, but the South Africa has three years. Just training in the outside game, but the Seychelles only three months uh, training. Actually, we know, we know that it was going to be tough, and South Africa also knew that it's, it will, it will, it's going to be hard. So the team that make uh, less mistakes won, so they were better today, and they played very well. And they won, and we are happy. Uh, at least we were in the semi-finals. In the other semi-final match at Wednesday Revolution Badminton Court, Nigeria were no match for the talented Mauritius. The African sporting giants were expected to provide the toughest of tests. But Mauritius Nicola Chan Lam defeated Nigeria's Tosin Atolagbe in the women's single and went on to win the two other games, making it 3-0 against Nigeria in the team event category. The Nigerian coach has attributed their defeat to Mauritius to rampant injuries in his team. We are faced with one or two Difficult. It has to do with uh, injuries, problems, and uh, we must find an option. All right. Even at that, it wasn't a game we expect to lose. Action will now shift to the individual events starting on Monday. Wazir Khamsin, Brazzaville, Congo. More from Brazzaville in just a short while, but first, the world's first cup for the less privileged children was recently held in Cairo. Football stars from Africa and the Middle East joined the closing ceremony, showing amazing solidarity with those who are less fortunate. And as Adal Al Muruki reports, eight countries participated in the competition.
It was a celebration from the heart. Everyone, winners and losers, joined hands, marking the end of the first World Cup for underprivileged children. Egypt is proud that it hosted the competition. I thank the organizing committee for this great event, particularly those who created the concept and their humanitarian support through the sports. I'm proud that Egypt hosted the first version of the competition. God willing, it will continue, and I hope it gets bigger and better every year. Satuk, the creator NGO of the Cup, made sure that its first competition would be a success. African and international competitions were held here in Cairo Stadium, but to many Egyptians, this event stands out. The concept might sound simple, but the coaches, though, they say it wasn't an easy mission. It was a challenge. The cup had strict rules. We had to find young boys who were 13 to 14 years old. They must not have been part or played for any club. They had to be orphans or received social services for harsh living conditions. Then we had to train them teach them discipline, how to eat, and how to play. It was a great responsibility, because at the end of it all, they had to wear t-shirts that says Egypt on the back. And we managed to transform the kids to the stars you see tonight. The NGO aims to give these children an opportunity to pursue their dreams in sports. So all the children did their best to show off their talents in front of the professionals. We need to make the kids happy and support them. More importantly, we need to develop their talent. I've seen more than one player who has good skills and excellent technique. They just need to keep following their dreams with perseverance. And who knows, maybe one of them could become a world-class player. Despite the limited participation of teams and audience, the first World Cup for orphans had a great spirit. Egypt might have won the first title, but it's a bigger victory for football and humanity. Adel Mahoui, CCTV, Cairo. Well, in its second match for the Africa Cup of Nations qualifier, the Ethiopian national team has drawn one all in the Seychelles. The first half ended 1-0 in favor of Seychelles, courtesy of a goal by Nelson Lawrence, who converted a penalty in the 24th minute. The Walias Antelopes leveled the score seven minutes into the second half after defender Sayum Tesfai scored the equalizer. Now, after the game, Seychelles national team coach Ulrich Matteo said his team has delivered well, despite minimal preparation. His Ethiopian counterpart, Johanna Sahil, said the result is not what his team had hoped for. We against the team, uh, good team, technically, physically, everything. But uh, my guys is, uh, deliver everything, more than 100 percent. I'm happy for them. Well, no, I'm not happy. What, what team will be happy when uh, you tie the game? I mean, uh, they, they, they wanted to win, we wanted to win. But uh, at the end of the day, we tied the game. Isn't that the part of the game? Well, 12 matches will be played on Sunday as the second round of the 2017 Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers continues with two teams hosting games away from home. Sierra Leone will host African champions Cote d'Ivoire in Mali due to the Ebola virus outbreak in their country. And in Group F, Libya will take on Cape Verde in Cairo due to the deteriorating security situation in Libya. The Desert Foxes pitched camp in the Egyptian capital this week as they look to set their campaign back on track. Libya lost their first qualifier against Morocco and will be hoping to cause an upset against Cape Verde as they eye their first three points of the competition. Libya are third in the group, led by Cape Verde, followed by Morocco with Sao Tome bringing in the rear. Our well, time now for a short break. We'll be back with more sporting action in just a short while. Why high costs and dwindling numbers of competitors are worrying African rally officials and Durban delight as they're picked to host the 2022 Commonwealth Games.
Now, the African Rally Championship says it has seen a drastic fall in the number of competing drivers. Competitors say the cost of participating in the eight-round Continental Championship is keeping them away. Organizers are now desperate to turn this around. Leon Senyange reports. Many drivers dream of a racing career in the African rally circuit. But there is one major deterrent to that finances. Even for those already in the sport, taking part is costly. Jasper Chate is the new African rally champion. Despite being fully sponsored, he admits competing on the continent is expensive. Of course, a uh, big challenge in all aspects, financially, uh, logistically, time-wise. Yeah, it's not, it's not easy. It's quite a challenge. Drivers have to compete in at least six countries to be crowned African champion. Transporting the rally cars and support personnel to the different countries can be a logistical nightmare. This year, only three drivers made it to the sixth round of the circuit. Imagine that you have an event in Ivory Coast, you have the next event in uh, say Tanzania. You have to go around the Cape of Good Hope to get the car into Tanzania. Then you do East Africa, which will be relatively easy. But the moment you start going either south or north, then the, begin, the problems begin. On top of that, we have an island of Madagascar, a part of Africa. They are part of the African Rally Championship. Getting a car to Madagascar is another challenge altogether. So this, this jointness, if you like, uh, or difficulties with the logistics is another problem. The championship's popularity has not been helped much by the withdrawal of the famous Kenya Safari Rally this year. Proposals are on table to change the format of the African Rally Championship. One of them is having drivers compete in two regions with a final round to determine the overall winner. Many think that could increase the number of drivers and also cut the costs of competition. We need to, we need to see this championship grow and, and I think if the championship is weak, then maybe the feeling is not so good. So everybody needs to put their thinking hats on and, and, and be part of this because uh, I think if we just act on our own, we won't achieve anything. The slum for now is, however, not down to the lack of potential drivers. Zambia, which has produced the most African rally champions, is developing programs to encourage more drivers into competition. Zambia alone, we've got more than 12 uh, drivers that are between the age of 16 and 21. Uh, I know in South Africa they've got quite a lot. I, I know in Kenya they've got a few youngsters that are coming up. And when you see all these youngsters, it's almost a promise that the future is bright. Ethiopia could also be the newest inclusion to the African rally circuit. It may come down to logistics as to whether drivers will be eager to compete there. Leon Senyange, CCTV, Kampala. Well, let's go back to the excitement of the All Africa Games. Our sports team is on the ground in the Republic of Congo, and CCTV's Mahe Mutu now joins us live from Brazzaville. Mahe, no doubt the excitement is certainly picking up there at the 11th All Africa Games. Just take us through the day's highlights. Well, indeed, Lindy. Yeah, uh, the the has uh, the action has finally kicked off here at the All Africa Games. Uh, probably the biggest highlight was the kick of the opening ceremony last night. Uh, we were here with Wazir uh, CCTV's Wazir Hamsin joins us now. Uh, just what what an impressive spectacle it was, wasn't it, Wazir? I mean, it it was definitely a wonderful ceremony. You could see the excitement that was that had filled that stadium, the new Kintela Stadium, uh, which is very new actually, and uh, thousands of Congolese uh, and even other nationals that actually joined them in the opening ceremony, led by the president himself, Denis Sassou of uh, Republic of Congo, and and you, you know what, Mahia, uh, actually. It's, it was a sort of a homecoming uh, because this is the 50th anniversary. This is the jubilee of all Africa games. The inaugural uh, games were held in this country, and that was in 1965. Of course, not in this uh, very exciting and uh, entertaining stadium. This is very new. Yes. Uh, but, uh, but at least, I mean, this is where uh, 
the, the African Olympics were first held, and that was in 1965, and 50 years on. I mean, it's it, it can only get better. Indeed. Uh, but uh, talking about today's action, of course, there was badminton. Uh, football teams have been uh, preparing, but you were at the Revolution in the city center. Uh, what was the badminton uh, semifinals in the mixed uh, event like? I mean, it was another uh, excellent performance, especially when we talk of a team like uh, Seychelles, actually giving uh, a team like South Africa a run for their money. And it's a very young team. You look at a player like uh, Joji Kopido uh, playing against uh, people like Jennifer Fry and, uh, and Andri, and, and they manage actually to, to keep the, the momentum of the game. And it's uh, them actually for Seychelles actually getting to the semi-finals of the team event, that's quite an achievement. You look at a team like Mauritius compared to Nigeria, you'd think maybe Nigeria would actually kill the game literally uh, by the third seat or the third game. But actually Mauritius uh, went, uh, immediately went for the attack and they won the game against uh, uh, Nigeria. And right now they're actually playing the decider against South Africa, which is actually a very strong team uh, compared to Mauritius. All right. Yeah. So we will be keeping an eye out for that. Of course, the badminton already heating up. We should know who will be the gold medalist. Uh, but there's also plenty to look forward to in the football. Uh, of course, uh, the, the teams here are benefiting from the, ex, uh, the, the, the miss, one team missing out. That is, of course, Egypt. Uh, uh, but the big mouthwatering clash on Monday, Wazir, uh, is, is uh, Cameroon against South Africa. Cameroon against South Africa, that's another big game. It's a, a match that actually you wouldn't want to miss. Uh, but the, the players, uh, they're all in their best form. And, uh, you know, this is uh, sort of a, a, a showcase for them. This is a platform that it's a, it's, it's a big African platform that actually they need to showcase their skills. And, and we know how skillful Africa and, and uh, the potential that we have for this continent and the kind and caliber of players that we have. I mean, it's going to be a very exciting uh, much. Uh, I'll definitely be there to, to watch that match and to follow on what's going on. In that. We both will, for sure. Uh, so, of course, uh, Cameroon taking on South Africa in the women's football. Uh, Ghana, of course, benefiting from the fact that Egypt will not be there and uh, they get a bye to the next group stage, uh, courtesy of the fact that Egypt will not be participating. From myself and Wazir Hamsin here in Brazzaville, uh, we will continue to keep you updated on all the goings on at the All Africa Games. Uh, back to you in Studio Lindy. Thank you very much. And of course, we do look forward to those updates uh, on the spectacle of African sporting talent there live from Congo Brazzaville. Time now for another quick breather. Still ahead on this show. Coming up on Match Point Delight, as South African City is picked to host the 2022 Commonwealth Games, a first for the continent. Welcome back to Match Point. We start now with the exciting news coming out of Durban, South Africa, with regards to hosting the Commonwealth Games. International Olympic Committee member Sam Ramsamy says Africa uniting behind Durban as their preferred Commonwealth host city contributed to its successful bid. The anti-apartheid activist also believes Durban will put on a successful event in seven years' time. CS2 Plessis reports. 
The city of Durban on the east coast of South Africa will host the 2022 Commonwealth Games. The announcement earlier this week was met with jubilation by many South Africans across the country and especially for IOC member Sam Ramsamy, who was an integral part in the bid for the multi-sport event and believes that it is a massive coup for the entire continent and not just South Africa. It's for Durban, it's for South Africa, it's for Africa. And all of Africa got together, united, in endorsing the candidature of Durban. And uh, that again indicated uh, that uh, Africa is one. Uh, especially that this will be the first time that Africa is host hosting such a major multi-sport event. Ram Sami, who's been an IOC member since 1995, maintains that the Commonwealth Games in Durban will be a massive success because of the country's successful hosting of the Rugby World Cup, Cricket World Cup and the FIFA World Cup. Uh, this will be the first time that a major sport event will be focused in Durban. You know, previously we've had um, as, uh, matches uh, w uh, with the World Cup rugby, with the World Cup football, with the World Cup cricket, and we've had uh, other major um, uh, involvement uh, from Durban, like the Commonwealth Games, heads of government meeting, uh, and other major events. But this is the first time that the public can get involved in a multi-sport event, and therefore it's very significant for Durban. And more importantly, this again, besides bringing the citizens of Durban together in a cohesive mood. Uh, it will also help Durban uh, uh, publicize itself internationally. The 77-year-old who was born in Durban says that the efforts of Wade van Niekerk and Anaso Jabodwana at the World Championships in Beijing will inspire many young South Africans to take up athletics. Up to now, uh, the, the sprinting in this country was not of a very high standard. And again, that was because they felt that we had no role models. Uh, they felt that we w were wasting our time in concentrating on 100 uh, meters and 200 meter events simply because the Americans, the Caribbeans are going to outdo us. But this has proved the other way around and I am certain that there will be very many more sprinters coming out of South Africa. There's a sense of jubilation and achievement as South Africans celebrate the fact that Durban has been awarded the Commonwealth Games for 2022. For Sam Ram Sami, it's a perfect opportunity for the nation to prove yet again that it is capable of hosting the best events the globe has to offer. It also provides young athletes with something to aspire to as they all dream of hopefully representing South Africa in seven years' time. CS2 Plus CCTV, Johannesburg. Now, former Nigeria international Segun Odegbami has joined the race for the FIFA presidency, seeking to be the first African to head the world football governing body. He is the second Nigerian and the third African to show interest in succeeding outgoing FIFA president Sepp Blatter. Odegbami has never held a top-level job in football administration before, but says he's confident he will make it to the ballot on February 26, 2016, when the election for the new president is expected to take place. If you know my history, go and read. One, I played the game to a very high level. Two, I have administered football at the NFA level. Three, I was a member of a committee in CAF. Four, I'm a consultant to some of the biggest organizations, multinationals in the world. I'm a consultant to Shell on their football. I'm a consultant to Globacom, the communications company, on their football. I'm a consultant to Nestle on their football. I'm a consultant to the biggest bank in Nigeria on their football, which is First Bank. I organize perhaps the biggest youth football tournament in the whole of Africa with 90,000 children from secondary schools scattered all over Nigeria every year for 17 years. I own a football club of my own. I am the chairman of my local government football council for so many years. I have been a member of, the, of my state football association for so many years. So I have the experiences. If I need new people with new ideas, with a clean record, who are going to be transparent, who are going to deliver the game of football from the rich and the powerful back to the masses that are the followers of the game of football. You are talking about corruption. You are talking about inequality. You are talking about wrong values. So what you need are people who are incorrigible, incorruptible, people who have discipline, who are transparent, who have integrity, who are clean, who have played the game, who understand the sensibilities, who bring all of these things to bear on an organization that is crying for change. That's what I am here for. I'm not here for the riches or the politics. I'm here to develop the game.
to take the game back to the people, to make it beautiful once again, to take our attention away from all the riches. Now, the African Championships, uh, Champions Olympic qualification, rather, in the pentathlon was recently held in Cairo. Two Egyptians won first place in the men and women's rounds and, as a result, earned an early ticket to the 2016 Olympics in Rio de Janeiro. Aldel al Muruki has more. It was a sweeping victory for Egypt. The country won all medals in the men's competition as well as the women. I uh, feel so good actually. It's really nice to be qualifying to the Olympics like one year one year before the Olympics because when you get to the season, the Olympic season, it's so hard to focus in preparation for the Olympic Games and also qualifying. So now I'm, qualif I'm qualifying to the Olympics so I can make a very good preparation for the Olympic Games. The competition in men was confined between Egypt and South Africa, the oldest teams in the continent. Both won the first seven positions of the ten participating players. South Africa players say it wasn't easy to get used to the weather difference at that time of the year. It was definitely one of the hottest competitions uh, regarding weather. Um, coming from South Africa, we came out of the winter now. So coming to 35, 37, 39 degrees Celsius is quite a... Uh, adaption we have to make. Organization is good, uh, the food is good, the hospitality is good and the people are friendly. Six countries joined the pentathlon championship in Cairo on Friday. Sixteen players were competing on the titles, half of them Egyptians. It sounds like little participation, but the African Confederation for the Sport was pleased. For the first time, this number of countries can participate. We started since some time by two countries only, as you know, this is, was not an easy sport. But we could, uh, with the UIPM, make it much easier and uh, less costing uh, by changing some of the rules without changing the, uh, the sport itself. And this is how it helped me very much, of course, in joining some more countries. Uh, now we are 10 African countries. It was the first time nine African countries registered for the competition. Three countries dropped out for financial reasons. But it was still a historic moment for pentathlon in Africa, having Madagascar and Gambia joining for the first time with some assistance from the Confederation. Two Egyptians were lucky to win an early ticket to the Rio de Janeiro Olympics, but there is still room for more to join through the ranking lists. Players will have to earn points in international competitions up until the end of May next year. The latest increase in the number of countries joining pentathlon will give support to the African Confederation when it asks to increase the continent's quota, which is currently just two seats. Adel Mahroui, CCTV, Cairo. And that's it for this edition of Matchpoint. Now remember, you can send your feedback to matchpoint at cctv.com. You can also visit our Facebook page, that's CCTV, or stay in touch or via Twitter using those details there on your screen. We do thank you for watching this edition of Matchpoint.